One of the things I spend a lot of my time doing is figuring out ways to push forward the industry of streaming or push forward the creativity that is involved with streaming. For the longest time, I've wanted to have a way for streamers to interact with the stream and the stream environment or what they're watching on my stream from the chat. Using Touch Portal, you can create channel point redemptions on your Twitch stream that interact with the streaming environment. Things like changing the webcam frame or the webcam frames color doing interesting animations all can be done with creating buttons in touch portal i've created some pretty interesting animations that i'm going to show you how to set up today one of them is like a confetti celebration animation and the other one is uh punching me in the face it's kind of a funny thing um these are some of the more basic ideas that i've had with this channel points redemption concept i definitely plan on taking this forward and doing a lot more with it but i wanted to create this video so i'm going to show you how to set up those two buttons in this video but before we get started let me introduce the sponsor of this video Before I started designing my own overlays, Nerd or Die was the place I would go to get my stream art. They make it really easy to import any of their overlays into OBS or Streamlabs OBS. They have a plethora of free and paid options on their website. Many of their overlays come with an After Effects file so you can customize it to you and your brand. Nerd or Die is actually what I used for the icons that I have on Touch Portal. I've made some changes to them to suit what I wanted and the look that I wanted, but you can get a ton of free icons from Nerd or die they also have a pack for animated rgb icons that are only going for six dollars so if you're interested in checking out all the things that nerd or die has to offer use the link in the description below you can do some pretty creative things using the plugins that are available on the obs form page for instance if you combine shadow fx with touch portal you can create some interactive or interesting changes to the streaming environment using the built-in shaders from that plugin there are tons and tons of things that you can do with this concept to really evolve the creativity that you have on your stream. You can customize shaders with shadow FX and create your own effects for your stream or even use the move transition plugin to move your webcam around the stream. In order to create the punch my face channel points redemption, it will require you to have the move transition tool. I plan on making some future videos on this tool as there's a lot you can do with this tool. It has some really cool effect filters built into to the plugin but for this video specifically we're going to be doing the punch my face channel redemption and the confetti celebration and i hope it gives you a good idea of what you can do with touch portal so the first thing you're going to need to do is download that move transition plugin i have included the link in the description below once you've extracted the files from the move transition plugin you will have a data folder and an obs plugins folder you want to highlight both of those you want to copy both of those and you will paste them into your obs OBS Studio file. Uh, so you'll go over to your OBS Studio and you'll just paste them right here. That ensures that they will get installed properly. Go ahead and click the replace the files destination. The first one I'm going to show you guys how to create is the confetti celebration one. Uh, what we need is the confetti animation that I have included for download in my Discord server. So you're going to create a new media source in your sources. It will be a media source. I already have it here. I have it labeled confetti. And what you're going to do is upload that confetti with guns webm file. You want to make sure that you don't have the loop enabled. You have restart playback when source becomes active and the close file when inactive. This will make sure that every time the animation is ran, it will be run on the stream. Otherwise, it won't be closed out and it won't run every time someone triggers the animation. So you got to make sure that you have these settings enabled. You also want to make sure that you have it defaulted to off. So don't have it turned on. You want to have it turned off. Next, you'll have to create the custom reward. So go ahead and create that custom reward and give it a name. Make sure you remember the name because you will have to have that name in order for this function to work in touch portal now that you have the channel point created we're ready to head over to touch portal and set up our button i'm going to go ahead and show you with the button that i have already made so i'm going to open this button here 
As you can tell, we have nothing on the on press tab because we're not pressing this button. We want something to happen when the redemption of channel points occurs on our stream. So we're going to go over to our on event tab. As you can see, I have my whole button set up here. The first thing we need to create is the event that happens here. When channel points are redeemed for the ID of the channel point ID here. So in order to create this event type, what we will do is go over to our action menu here on the left. We will scroll down until we find twitch here at the bottom and what we're going to select is the event on channel points redeem you want to make sure the channel points id matches exactly how it appears on twitch as you can see here i have it say confetti celebration now when someone redeems the confetti celebration redemption in our channel we want to make sure that it shows the confetti animation and the way we do that is by activating the source within obs so if we go back to our actions here in the menu on the left scroll up until we find OBS, we're going to create a source visibility action. What we're going to do is toggle that source for the scene. So make sure you have the correct scene selected here and for the source, which is the confetti source. This will ensure that when someone redeems the confetti celebration redemption, it will play the confetti animation. The next thing we want to do is make sure it has enough time for the animation to play before it's being turned off again. So what we will do is create a timer. Going back onto the action menu on the left, we will scroll up to our logic selections here. We want to select a wait for timer action. On the wait for timer action, we're going to switch it from milliseconds over to seconds. This animation lasts for five seconds in total, so we're going to switch it for, from 100 to 5 seconds. The next thing we need to do is make sure that the animation is being hidden afterwards, so that when someone redeems it again, it will go live again. So the way we can do that quickly is now that we have this action here, we can right click it, copy that action, right click again, and paste that action. It might paste it at the top of the event tab, simply need to just left click on it and drag it down. The only thing we want to change on this here is instead of having it toggle, we're going to switch it to hide. Now you have successfully created the confetti animation for your stream. The only thing left to do is make sure the animation is actually fit within the webcam frame that you have in OBS. In order for you to get this lined up correctly, what I suggest doing is turning on the confetti animation. If you need to play it several times, you can right click it, go to properties and loop it until you get it fit and then make sure you go back in and turn off the looping. Once you have the animation fit within the webcam frame properly, we're ready to move on to the next animation. The Punch My Face channel redemption is a bit more complex, so bear with me with this explanation. I will try and explain it as clearly as possible. In order to set this up, we need to create a move filter on our webcam group. The way we can do this is actually by right clicking on the scene over here on the left, going to filters, and then adding a move source filter. As you can see on the left here in the menu, I already have the face punch move filter already created. Created. For the source of this move filter, we want to select our webcam group. The next thing that you're going to change is the positioning of that webcam group and the scaling of that webcam group. It will be defaulted to something else. Keep in mind, a little bit of scaling goes a long, long way. My scaling prior to the three scaling here is like 1.27, and then it goes to three. Um, and it expands about half of the screen there. So you're going to change the position and the scaling for this effect filter. You're going to have to toy with this to get it in a position that you will like. The rest of the settings will be set up identically to what I have here. You want to select no to change visibility, zero milliseconds for start delay, 1000 milliseconds for the duration. You want it to ease out you also want the bouncing function. That's what creates the little bounce uh, that gives it that animated look like it's getting punched. You want to set that curve to 25.25 and you want to make sure that the start trigger here is enable. So that means when this thing turns on, it does this move function. The next thing you want to do is actually create another move source filter. I have mine set to the middle right here. So if I go over to my middle right filter here, again, you're going to set the source to the webcam group. 
what you're going to do is set the position and the scale back to what it was before the face punch move. You want to have the same settings down below as well. You want to make sure you have zero curve on that. You can set it to any easing function. The duration can be any duration that you want it to be. I like to have mine at a thousand milliseconds. And then again, you want to make sure the start trigger is enabled. Those are the two move filters that you will need for the face punch animation. So go ahead and turn both of those off and close out of this window. The next thing you're going to want to do is upload both the punch sound and the pow comic bubble that I have for download in my discord server. And what you can do is group them together. If you don't know how to group them, it's quite easy. Easy. If you hold down on control and click on both sources and then right click, there will be a selection for grouping those uh, sources. You will want to make sure both the punch sound and the comic bubble are enabled, but you want to make sure the actual group itself is disabled. You can worry about the comic bubble positioning later after you have created the button in touch portal. Just make sure you go back to OBS after creating the button and move the comic bubble to the correct position. Now you're ready to head over to touch portal and set up the button. Same thing as last time. I'm going to show you the button that I have created already. This one is very complex. It will be a lot easier to show you what I have set up versus going through it. So again, we're going to go over to the on event tab here. As you can tell, there's quite a lot that goes into this because we're trying to get all the timing perfected. Same as before, you need to make sure you create that channel point redemption on Twitch and then name the channel ID here for the events type. Let me kind of walk you through the functions here quickly and then we'll go through and set them up. So the first function here is turning on the move filter, the face punch filter that bounces the webcam up and zooms it in. Then we have a slight wait time here and then it shows the face punch group this is going to be the sound effect and the comic bubble that pops up and then you have a slight timer again and it disables that face punch group so it turns off the sound effect and the comic bubble after that we have another wait timer we turn off the face punch move filter we have a slight timer again and we turn on the move filter for middle right to move our webcam back to its original position and then we have a thousand millisecond timer for the full move transition to take place. And then we turn the middle right move transition off. The big thing when setting up something like this is you want to make sure there's enough time for everything to function properly. Otherwise, it won't work. For instance, this face punch move filter requires 1000 milliseconds in order for it to fully move to its position. I have combined 350 milliseconds with 250 milliseconds with 400 milliseconds to equal 1000 milliseconds in order to ensure the entire filter is played. I also time it out so that the sound effect and the comic bubble pop up at the perfect time. If you don't have the correct amount of time in between each one of these source filters, it will stop the move in between its move and it won't be fluid and it won't work properly. The first action that we have here is a set scene filter. So if you click on that, what you're going to do is select the scene and the filter, which should be your face punch or whatever you named it. The next two are source visibilities. So go ahead and create two actions here, source visibility. What we're doing is showing the source of the face punch group, and then we're hiding the source of the face punch group. Make sure you have the timers in between each one of these source changes. After the face punch group changes, we're gonna go ahead and create another scene filter. So set scene filter again, and we're going to turn off that face punch move filter. So go ahead and turn that off. Then place a slight timer in between that and the next move filter. This will move the webcam back to its original position. Then you need a thousand milliseconds in between that to make sure the entire move transition is played or whatever amount of time that you set in that move filter. And then make sure you turn off that move filter. The way we set up these move filters is so when they are turned on, it is activating that move. If you don't turn off those move filters after they've been activated, it won't work the next time it gets activated. 
So you have to turn on and off every time you create one of these filters. After you have all these things set up, it will be working just the way you want it to. There is one thing you have to keep in mind when you're using the channel point redemptions with touch portal whatever page you have those buttons on you need to make sure you're actually looking at that page on your device while you're streaming otherwise the function won't work that's going to be it for this video guys i want to thank you so much for watching if you did like this video hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this in the future. If you're interested in funding this channel and my Discord server, check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash thefrancois. Again, I want to thank you so much, and I will catch you guys in my next video. Peace out.